Hello there, my name is Levko, and today I shall be building a PC. So before we get into the build, I want to talk about actually the parts and the selection process that I went through when choosing these parts to fit under the specific budget. Many people in their build videos talk about, hey, this is the most powerful CPU, this is the most powerful graphics card, hey, this is the most expensive NVMe SSD. However, not everyone really needs that. And with this, I want to actually show you guys the actual process that people need to go through before building a PC and choosing the actual parts. So I'm building a PC for my little brother who does obviously a lot of gaming, but he also wants to try streaming. And the most important one is that he does a lot of Blender modeling. It's something he does in his pastime and has been interested in doing it for a while, but his computer is, well, it's on its last breath and it's no longer able to really support him in his hobbies. So for the CPU for this project, I went with a Ryzen 3600. So many people would say 3600 is the best one, and yes, this one is best. Some people might say, well, you should have gone with a 2600 because it's $80 cheaper, and it gives you the similar performances in games. The thing is, here I'm going for the IPC. The IPC isn't really that much in games. However, at higher quality presets, it can be a difference. It's more about the single core performance in terms of modeling workloads. For the graphics card, I chose the RTX 2060, which is the MSI Gaming X variant. One of the reasons I chose this is because of the higher support and blender for CUDA. For the motherboard of choice, I have the MSI B450M Pro M2. And the most important part is the Max. The Max uh, motherboards are the ones that support Ryzen 3000 right out of the side of the box, which means no clunky BIOS updates or loaner CPUs. I can just plop in the 3600 into this right out of the gate and have it running perfectly. So with Ryzen 3000, memory speed uh, in terms of RAM doesn't really impact performance that much. For that reason, I went with the Corsair Vengeance LPX 3200 MHz memory with a 2 8 gig sticks uh, kit. This will be plenty of uh, memory for both gaming and Blender work workflow and will still be enough to have a few Chrome tabs open in the back. For storage, I went with a crucial P1 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. In this day and age, it is 2020. You should not be rocking a hard drive for your OS or any of your main applications. This shall be enough memory to, or storage to be able to support a, a few games with Blender files and plugins, and that should be enough for, for a while, especially because uh, it's not gonna be slowing down the OS. The issue is with hard drives. Whenever you have an OS running on a hard drive, the hard drive needs to constantly go back and forth between different random points on the hard drive to retrieve it in different system files and that's what usually slows down a hard drive. Having an SSD or an NVMe SSD run the OS, you can then later on have a hard drive for files and stuff, which will actually run a lot faster because it's no longer trying to pinpoint all the files and the OS files. Now, for power supply, this was an obvious choice. Coming around for $60, this is a Corsair CX450M. This system, uh, should draw around 340 watts, so going for a 450 watt uh, uh, power supply, this should be plenty. One beautiful thing about this power supply is that the cables are not mustard and ketchup. They are actually all black and the 24 pin is actually sleeved. This is also a semi-modular power supply, so in due time he could, if he wants to, put in some custom cables not necessary for this system. And this is an 80 plus bronze certified power supply, so it shall last for a while. For the case of choice that will be housing all of these beautiful components is the Thermal Take Versa H17. To aid in the thermal performance of the system, I've also procured some Noctua fans that shall be put in front in the front of the case.
So, before we begin building everything, the smart choice is to actually put everything into the motherboard, plug everything into a monitor and the power supply, and actually make sure everything works before you put it into the case, because if you do that, then you have to take everything out and it would be a big of a hassle. So, let's first put everything into the motherboard and test it.